I don't know, after hearing him calm and talking about the tether story, it's probable. Go down to the county attorney's office. I think you'll find a lot of humans down there. All right. No disrespect. Stop driving. I'm flirting with the judge in front of my dad. Probation. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everyone doing? Happy Saturday. Happy college football day. We've got a good collection of angry judges for you today. Start off with, you know what? I don't remember the, the judge's name in the first video. Covered him before. He's around. You'll know when you see him. Uh, judge Elmore. Of course, Judge Elmore. He's I told you before, he's become my favorite judge. And I got a good one with Judge Perkins at the end. But before I get into it, I've got a comment for all the trolls out there. Do better. If you're going to be a troll, be a troll. There's nothing worse than a lazy troll. I don't know if you guys know this. But as a creator, I don't know if everyone can see this. But as a creator, when you put a comment on my channel, I can see every channel you're subscribed to, every comment that you've made on my channel and on other channels. I don't know if you know that. So I can see how lazy you are. And I'm never going to respond to a lazy troll. I don't mind you being a troll. Be a troll all you want. Just do better. Come on. Do better. The same two comments on every video. Do better. All right. Before we get into it, you already know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe button. Do your jump kick backflips. And as always, link trees down in the description. All right. Let's go see some angry judges. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Mifanaga. I'm Judge Eric Morrow. This is the state court expedited accusation calendar that we're conducting by video. Do you agree to have your case heard by video? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You've been charged in case 23CR007125H with battery family violence. Is there a history, Mr. Howard? No. Jail was a recommendation. Mr. Yeah, Pierre brief, Thomas. Brief facts of the case. One moment. All right. I don't know how many of you watch this court, but that Mr. Howard guy, he's, I don't know what the actual job is, but he's, you know, Judge Van has the officer, the woman that tells him what their, what the defendant's priors are. That's pretty much what his role is. But he, he always sounds like he's annoyed to be called on. Not saying he is, but he's just, he just, I don't know. Never sounds like he wants to be bothered. And it's, and it's funny to me. Every time he talks, I laugh because he always sounds like he's bothered. All right. I'm not going to rant anymore about him, but let's go. But he's funny. He's funny. Three facts of the case is that law enforcement responded to 6969 Roswell Road, apartment A in Sandy Springs in reference to a domestic dispute. The Upon arrival, the officer met with the caller, the victim in this case, victim appears to be Lolo, L-O-L-O, Plantain, P-L-A-N-T-A-N, who stated that she and her spouse, the defendant, got into an argument over their son's discipline or their son being disciplined. The verbal altercation turned physical when the defendant struck her in the face with a closed fist over uh, and over and over again and continued to hit her on the left side of her face. She stated that she covered the right side of her face in order to protect herself and was attempting to push the defendant off of her. Uh, the victim sustained a visible cut on the inside of her lip uh, on the left side, as well as discoloration um, discoloration marks on the left side of her face that appear to be uh, in the beginning stages of bruising. The recommendation from the state is a $2,000 surety bond. No further uh, contact with uh, the victim in this case, Miss Plantain. Uh, stay away from that incident location, 6969 Roswell Road, Sandy Springs, the completion of a family violence intervention program, no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. Our office was able to get in contact with the victim, and uh, she advised that they live together and they share one child. She confirmed the events in the warrant, uh, and she stated that this is not the first time that the defendant has been violent towards her, and this is not the first time that the police has been called out. 
Uh, she stated that this is the first time the defendant has been arrested, however. Uh, it, I do believe that she is on the call, and so we give an opportunity to, uh, and sound for her in accordance with Marcy's law. So if we could sound for Ms. Plantain, that'd be greatly appreciated, Your Honor. Yes, I see her there, Ms. Plantain. If you would like to address the court, I need for you to raise your right hand for me. Yes. Do you swear or affirm the yes. testimony? Okay, I can see you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give before this court be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, you can put your hand down. Uh, what would you like to tell the court? Um, your Honor, what I'd like to tell you is what happened yesterday was a completely misunderstanding between me and Moses. Me and Moses, we have one child who is at the background here. I just picked him up from school. And this is our only child whom we love so much. So what happened yesterday was, you know, a minor misunderstanding which escalated. And we as adults, we we took full responsibility for not being able to behave ourselves. And then that's why, you know, um, whatever happened had happened. But the bottom line is, Johanna, Moses is a good father a person of moral conduct of course we do disagree at some point as parents but the bottom line is a very good person um we normally disagree verbally but nothing physical you know and his son is here is asking for him because today they plan going um hiking at the at the chattahoochee liver so he's a very good he's a very good father he's a, a very good person I apologize for for wasting your time for something which I am I am feeling so bad is something which we, we should have handled you know as a family so this is very very um heartbreaking um we we would like to have him back at home we love him so much his son has been asking a lot for him he's back now and he's asking his mother's back home and i'm like no we had to run into the car to take this call so it's very very emotional for all of us so you are now, i'd like to beg your mercy for him so that he can be discharged this is something which was not supposed to happen in the first place but it happened this is a very huge mistake and we're going to learn from our mistake and next time as parents we're going to um handle ourselves you know you know better because what happened yesterday was not supposed to happen at all so i beg your mercy johanna please help us yeah, i'm sorry i'm, very emotional. I'm yeah, so I sorry need, i'm very emotional i need for you to pull yourself together because i have some questions for you yes yes sir okay did you find it necessary and uh, yeah i am um a, a bit um uh, that you have your child in the car while you're discussing uh these matters with the court but that is that is okay. that is that is your no i'm not telling you to let him out of the car but i'm just what i'm yeah. saying is i don't know how safe that is but oh You've got a father that's in, in custody. You're emotional. Apparently, you had to call the police yesterday um, uh, for uh, for this incident. And, yes. and you're doing what you're doing right now, and that's in front of your son. That causes me distress, OK? That should also cause you and um, uh, Mr. Moses distress also. So in answering my questions, has this ever happened before? Yes, Your Honor. This has has happened has happened before in the past, where like you know we have some disagreements, and it's very like not something very serious, like very minor things. You know, um, maybe he's he doesn't disagree on something which I like to do for Gabriel. You know, because you know as a mom, sometimes maybe I tend to spoil him a lot. So those 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 kind of things which are very very minor. Yes. Okay, but well, there, 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 there are allegations of physical violence in this case. Has that ever happened before? Yes, it has. It has ever. It has happened in the past, but not to the extent that happened yesterday. Okay, and uh, Mr. Pierre Thomas, do you have any questions? I just want to be clear. Who called the police? I did. Okay. And why did you call the police? Um, so I called the police, I think, as I said earlier, I wasn't 
thinking straight. I was very emotional. I overreacted. I, I strongly believe it's something which we could have speak and talk about it. Because as I said, it wasn't something which was very major. It was it's it's about, you know, how to discipline your child, how and when. So it's something as a parents, as adults, something that we can do and we can agree this is the best way to to discipline our child. Well, that's one thing. Did he lay his hands on you? Yes. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Did he lay his hands on you? Yes, he did. Okay, well, that does not have anything to do with the argument that you you have over discipline your child. Those are two separate issues, okay? Him laying his hands on you, if that's what you're telling this court that he did, is um, is not acceptable regardless of what um, what the circumstance. And you need to know I that. Yes, sir. I'm, con I'm concerned more about for that little boy that's behind you. You two are grown adults. But yes, the, sir. The trauma that you're char that you're causing that little boy that's sitting behind you. You all need to think about that. Yes, sir. Um. So, sir. Um. He's no, behind I, I, me. I don't, I don't. I don't need. I don't need. Sorry. Okay. Miss Atai. Yes, Your Honor. Um. <clears throat> My client is a 39 year old and does have the seven year old with the complaining witness. He has a master's in finance. He's not employed right now, states that he's depressed from his father passing, um, uh, I think in 2019. The warrant does state that um, the disagreement or the incident stemmed from the complaining witness um slapping the child and my client did not agree with that um he does have an injury from the incident he, he states that his tooth or the the cap or something has fallen out from his mouth and he needs a dental um a dental visit i guess um as miss planton has requested to have him return to the home we're asking and there's no criminal history or violent history. Um, we're asking for a signature bond and um, no stay away. Okay, as this just happened yesterday and, and what I've heard today and my concern for that child, there will be a stay away. Um, I'm going to, given that he doesn't have a history, it will be a $3,000 signature bond through pretrial uh, level one with one day anger awareness. Um, as far as um, contact, there is to be uh, no further contact at this uh, point in time with Ms. Planton. He is to stay away from the Roswell Road address. He can go back to that address on one occasion with law enforcement to retrieve any belongings that he might have there. I'm not going to keep him away from his child, but there will be third party contact uh, with the child for visitation and no drugs, alcohol or weapons while out on bond. So no contact means absolutely no contact while this is um, uh, being resolved. Um, uh, Mr. Moses and Ms. Lola, um, you all both need to think about uh, the, the consequences that your child is suffering because of the two of you grown adults. Yes, right. sir. Good luck to you all. Thank you. All right. What do you guys think? Was Judge a little harsh? Or was he right on the money? I don't know. You let me know. I'll tell you that I do think it's inappropriate to have your kid in the car with you while you're discussing a domestic violence situation. I don't think the son needs to hear that at all. So I agree with the judge on that. Was he a little harsh on his explanation? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. All right, Judge Elmore, this one's good. Let's go. We are on the record this afternoon for the 28th Circuit Court for Wexford County. And we are taking up the case of the people of the state of Michigan versus um, Matthew Peer. This is case number... Two two dash one three three one two F H. Appearances, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Williams on behalf of the people. Nicholas Klaus on behalf of Mr. Peer. 
Thank you. Mr. Pierce is here seated next to his counsel. We're here for a final pretrial conference. Before I begin or continue, let me take a quick look at the file. All right, there is some dead time in this. This is a motion to continue. Judge flipping through papers because he reads them all day long. I don't know how you read that fast. Maybe he just knows where to read, where the important information is. I don't know. But just wait till you hear how many times this has been continued. Then you'll understand his frustration. Just look at him flipping to those papers. What is he looking for? All right. He might have found it. I really want you guys' opinion on this one, though. Is this attorney games? The defendant really didn't do anything wrong outside of the, the crime he committed. I think this is a defense attorney tactic, and judge is just not having it. That's my opinion. Still flipping through pages, and there's another 30 right. second pause in about a, uh, a minute or two. Entry here from New York, in court. Looks like we're last in court on October 13th. Is that correct? That's what I showed you. Okay, all right. What are we doing with the case today? Your Honor, uh, we have retained well, we have an expert. Uh, we're waiting on our report, should come any day. Uh, however, we still do not have it at this date. I want to be able to give time to uh, Prosecutor Wiggins to compile their own. Uh, so we're, we are asking for another uh, adjournment today. Mr. Wiggins? Thank you, Your Honor. When I spoke to Mr. Pauls before uh, coming to the court, he explained it's probably going to be another week or two. My guess is probably with a short week next week, and uh, we probably won't see that report. I will definitely need to run that report by the MSP accident reconstructionist as well. Uh, so I would join in the request for adjournment. All right. I think this is the minute that he's down again while he's thinking about this. For all the attorneys out there and law nerds, how long do you wait for a witness to create a report? Is this on the witness? Is it on the attorney? Who Fine, whose fault is this? I don't want to. Let's just be blunt. I'm at my wit's end with this case. Why would I grant this adjournment? He had a month to get it done. Um, you've had the case now for a couple months. Where? How come? Why do I grant this? I'm ready to do a trial on December 5th, and I will make it. A, I'll put in that deadline. We got till Monday to get the report. Your, your honor, we two, we'll make it. We'll make it Wednesday. You can get the report by Wednesday next week. Your honor, I don't think we're going to have it by the day before Thanksgiving next okay. week. Then we I'm just did. denying you the right to present the expert witness. That's you've fine. had two months to get this done. I understand, your honor. Let me say, at least on the record, we did inquire prior to today when we might see. We have, excuse me, we have not received a response yet from the expert or their assistant as to when that might be, but we did inquire prior to today. When is, who is the expert? Mark Edgecombe is the name of the expert. And what does Mr. Edgecombe intend to present? What kind of evidence? <laughs> What's it about? Uh, well, it would have to do with the accident itself and so, I'm, I'm not sure I'm tracking with the... I'm sorry. Is he an accident reconstructionist? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And when was he retained? Your Honor, we I don't know that the retainer money has been sent to him yet. We sent that over to the defender's office and the co conflict administrator's office. That is not paid from Klaus Law. That's paid from somewhere else. Okay. So I'm just asking. So I don't know when he's being paid or how that works okay. I, he has had all of our i mean all of our evidence since 
before the final pretrial in October. So this is why I'm assuming that we should have the report any time in anticipation of today's hearing. Has he already done the work that would establish or provide the basis upon this first report? That I don't know, Your Honor, and that's why I was hoping to have an answer on that prior to today. That's what I was inquiring about, or rather what I instructed my assistant to inquire about to his office. And what has she told you? Well, that was copied on the email. We have not received a response yet. Okay. There's a lot of pushing blame to other people right now. I agree that the judge should be frustrated with this. But what do you do? I don't know if he's basing his whole case off of this reconstruction expert. But he hasn't been paid yet. So it's probably the last last thing on his list to do. I don't know if that's I don't know if this is a public defender's office. He said the name of his office, but he didn't say the public defender's office. So I don't know how that works. But I understand the frustration. And I don't know why the prosecution isn't fighting this harder. Don't prosecutors usually deny the motion to continue after so many times? If they're ready to go, don't they just deny it? Or is that just a polite thing to do? I don't know. We're going back to flipping through papers. You know what he's doing right now. All right, before he says it, how many times has this case been continued? <clears throat> say it's less than 10, but it's more than three. What's your answer? He's about to say it. Whoever gets the right answer gets a high five. You know what? You get a high five from Heather. Heather will give you a high five. Okay. It's you can file a motion down. to adjourn the trial and you can set it for next Wednesday. We'll hear it on Wednesday. Right now, the court's going to deny the oral motion and we'll set the matter for trial on December 5th. This case has been adjourned from trial dates set on June 14th, August 23rd, September 27th, October 25th. And I'm going to have that expert here in the courtroom or on Zoom explaining why he can't get the report done. Otherwise, I'm just going to deny you the opportunity to present the witness. Have you added him to the witness list? Have you added him to a witness list? Not yet, Your Honor. Not right, yet. Let's make sure you include in your motion the motion to amend your witness list because it's within 28 days. We're going to put this thing on a track that's going to get it to trial. And your expert's going to have to plan on being here on December 5th. And I'm going to give you a deadline, most likely, and you're going to have, we're going to, I'm going to put the feet to the fire. And maybe, just maybe, Mr. Wiggins is going to have to file a motion, which I'll entertain appropriately, on December 1st, which is the Friday before the trial, and we'll deal with it then. The court's not going to drag its feet anymore or allow any party. And I'm, I, I understand Mr. Uh, Klaus is trying to work with I've got Mr. Klaus asking for an extension on a trial with a witness he's never spoken to and doesn't know if he's done it well. I, have you spoken to with him about his work? Oh, yes, Your Honor. I uh, have spoken to do, him. Do you know what he's going to say? I don't know what he's going to say yet, Your Honor. No. Well, we'll set it for a hearing on Wednesday. We don't have enough time to deal with that today. Um, I'll expect you to file a motion. I know the government has a certain amount of time. I'm going to still hold the hearing on Wednesday. And we'll, you can contact the clerk's office and get a schedule. I'm sorry, not the clerk's office, my office. And we'll put it, like I said, we'll put it on the trial, on the court docket for Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned. Okay. All right. Four times as of yet. The fifth time is in December. I will be following that case on Wednesday. I want to see how this goes. When the judges get upset, that's not a good sign. But yeah, let me know about the prosecutor. Why wasn't he objecting to the objection? Objecting to the objection. No, objecting to the continuance, the adjournment. That's better. I don't know. 
I don't know if the prosecutor doesn't have a good case or he's waiting for the defense to see. A rec- I don't know. This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for it to be pushed out this part. I don't know if they even said the actual charge that this guy was charged under. I don't, there's a lot to this case. I don't know, which is why I'm going to be watching on Wednesday. All right. Let's finish up with Judge Perkins. This is a this is a a more fun one. More fun? A funner? Funner is not a word. It's a more exciting clip than the last two as opposed to well, no, let's just go. You know what? Let's just go. Words are hard. Yes, Judge, I'm, I'm here. Let's go back on the record with Ms. Landry. Ms. Landry, I've given Ms. Landry, um, she uh, had a 31 plus mile an hour over the speed limit. Um, the, the offer was uh, pleading to the amended count of a limited access 11 to 15 on that day. Um, but she, if she took a driving course and completed it, then then the, then the offer would be reconsidered. Is there is there a different offer? I do have completion of the driver course in the pile. Is there a different offer you would uh, have? Um, yes, Judge. In consideration of the fact that uh, she has completed the driver's course, the people would um, offer a further reduction to one to five over. All right. Miss Landry. Miss Landry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Clearly, I, I you know, I don't have to say too much about this. I just I can't fix it in my head where you figure you can go 63 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. I mean feel like I wasn't doing that because I got pulled over on the street that I was getting ready to turn and I'm not 63 miles an hour to turn the corner. So you, you, so that's your defense? Yeah, the information that he had on the ticket is wrong. The street he stopped at yeah, the time of day, like everything. All right, All right here we go. It's just... You're, 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 you're now now she's trying to uh go in the breakout room and get Mr. Corporal Bennett out. He just so happens to be here. Um okay. Mr. Garrett. Um okay, Judge. I don't okay. know if he remembers it because it wasn't set for formal hearing today. Okay, one moment. I will yeah, get Corporal Bennett. Appearance on the record, then. You said Garinger? Yes. I get All right, I'll, Attorney right. Luke Garinger, P85677, appearing on behalf of the city of Detroit. Let's go back on the record. Let's go back on the record with Ms. Landry. Corporal Bennett, I, I, um, I'm kind of. Can you put your appearance on the record, please? Uh, yes, Your Honor, Corporal Daryl Bennett, badge 4020, Detroit Police Department. I'm kind of putting you on the spot a little bit. It's not formal hearing. It's actually a. It's actually was going to be resolved with the one to five, 125 mile, 125 dollars. But I have Miss Sierra Joy Landry, and you just so happen to be the person that pulled her over on, um. On um, oh, back on September 20 of 2021, on Schoolcraft and Memorial, she was driving a 2020 GMC Gray going 31 plus. You wrote it for 31 plus. It says 63 and a 30. You do use device number DSR2X. And you had the notes down here saying that the distance was 200 feet. Yes, Your Honor. That's on the note. Yes, yes, sir. Ms. Ms. Gould, Ms. Uh, Ms. Landry uh, says that she absolutely wasn't going that fast and it was wrong. And her, her reasoning for it being that she knows that it's wrong is because she uh, was turning on the street. She says, you got the street wrong and everything. She says you were, she was turning on that street 
and there's no way that she can make a turn at 63 miles an hour. So, Yana, are we scheduled for a trial today or? No, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. They gave her an offer. I just, I just wanted to see, you know, you know, you know, usually when somebody's going 31, it's written as 31. I always ask them why, what makes you want to go so fast? But she offered the excuse that she wasn't doing it and it was, and, 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 and you were wrong about it. Well, I get, I get that a lot, John, but I, I am radar certified since 2000. So I've been doing it for, uh, quite 23 years so i think i know my cars when i pull them over what's miss landry got to say about that i said that he pulled me over on asbury park and he had on the ticket that it was at memorial that he stopped me and like i said the okay. time of day was let me ask you this let me ask you this did you do you have to pass memorial to get to asbury park Yes, but I didn't pass Memorial going 31 miles an hour over the speed limit. It was early in the day. It was traffic. You know, I can't go that fast there. Okay, Yana. So she's saying that where where she got stopped at is the wrong location. Yeah. So the ticket is uh, actually the area where the radar picked her up, where, where, I, where I got a read, Yana. So I, you know, I, I, clearly, I clearly understand that. I clearly understand that. So, so then, so Miss Landry, he didn't give you a ticket for turning at 63 miles an hour on Asbury Park. And you just indicated to the court that you had to pass Memorial to get to Asbury Park. He indicated that he clocked you at Memorial. Is that correct, Mr. Bennett? Yes, Your Honor. Bennett? Yes, Your Honor. We just have somebody that really, I think, in my eyes, doesn't want to really take responsibility for her for her actions. She's speeding, uh, whether it's 63 in a 30 or not. It's still, I still think she's speeding, and that's why she's taking this deal. Uh, yes, John, I think that's a good deal. Um, what she doesn't understand, you know, uh, my visual estimate. You know, I corroborate that with with the actual device, Your Honor, the radar. So there's two things that she has to overcome. All right. Um, all right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I, I appreciate it. Off for a minute. Yes, Your Honor. I'm gonna. Um, I don't know what I want to do with this. I don't know if I want to give you the deal. Your Honor, I could speak to either Gould or LaShore, whatever the court decides. All right. Um, so, what, 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 you weren't speeding at all then, Miss Landry? Uh, maybe about five that have got me there in 30 hours. You say what? Maybe about five to 10, my, well, probably about five or less, my, not 31 plus, that I wasn't going that fast. I know for a fact. Know. I just don't believe. I mean, like I said, it's early in the day. It's school craft. It's traffic on the street. I don't have any to go 63 miles per hour on school. Craft. I understand all that. I, I just, I don't know. I just don't believe. You. All right. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the one to five over one point on your license. Um. Uh, paid by um, $125.
paid by December 1st, 2023. All right. All right. Have a great day, ma'am. Best of luck to you. All right. There we go. That's it. That's all I got. What do you think? What did you think? Do you think she should have got a ticket? I don't know. Do you think the officer was right? I don't know. I'm not going to put my opinion out there to be told I'm wrong. So tell me what you think. Anyways, that's all I got. Enjoy your football. I hope your team wins. If you haven't done it already, like and subscribe. Do your jump kick backflips. And if you would like to donate, link tree is down in the description. Until next time, bye.